two, one, ignition. And lift off the Falcon 9. Go SpaceX. Go forward. Good morning to the vast majority of my viewers in the Western Hemisphere. Good afternoon to most of you in Europe and Africa, and welcome to a special bulletin here on the Angry Astronaut. As reliable as Falcon 9 is, as routine as these flights have always been, I'll bet you that almost nobody was watching this particular Starlink launch, given how routine these things have become lately. Well, the unthinkable happened with Falcon 9, not with the first stage. Again, everything performed perfectly, including the first stage landing. However, it was the upper stage that suddenly had problems during a sequential landing burn, not the primary burn of the Merlin engine on the second stage, but rather another burn that was supposed to put the Starlink satellites into the proper orbital perigee. And... For some reason, the burn didn't go as expected, and then the engine exploded. Now, prior to this event taking place, ice was noticed accumulating on the engine, some of the ice even falling into the rocket plume. A very strange phenomenon, kind of difficult to determine what might be causing that, except for some sort of propellant leak, something along those lines. Once again, I can't claim to be an expert. I'm just guessing. But regardless of what happened, definitely this put the Starlink satellites that were deployed in the mission in jeopardy, haven't gotten the final word on that yet at the time of this recording, but it's very likely that those satellites are going to be lost. But the consequences are far more significant than that, because this is the rocket that puts Crew Dragon into orbit and sends it to the International Space Station. Had a Crew Dragon been on this mission, it would have had to have carried out a very difficult and dangerous emergency re-entry after the engine exploded, because Crew Dragon most probably would have been put into a decaying orbit that it couldn't recover from. It requires almost all of Crew Dragon's fuel to get it the rest of the way to the International Space Station, which is the one reason that it can't be used for a space station reboost, as opposed to some of the other spacecraft that are going to be docking with the ISS. So this would have been a very bad situation for anybody on a Crew Dragon had they been on this flight. That being the case, it is very likely that NASA is going to require an investigation before they allow allow this rocket to carry Crew Dragon and NASA astronauts in the future. In the meantime, we have astronauts stranded on the ISS, and their only way off the station, assuming that Boeing can't eventually get Starliner working well enough to safely re-enter the atmosphere, was Crew Dragon. Unless, of course, the Russians decide to be generous and offer one of their Soyuz capsules to provide a way off the station should an emergency arise. And this is something the Russians are pretty unlikely to do right now, given the extreme hostility that exists between the U.S. and Russia. That being the case, then, we can see very clearly why we have always needed a backup commercial crew solution. And, of course, Boeing has been unable to provide it. I will keep you up to date on future developments. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.